All right, so uh, what we did uh, towards the end of the class is that we did a little bit of uh, uh, reflective analysis. I call it reflective analysis because in that particular segment, I asked you to reflect, okay, what if I want to estimate my mom's, my mom's house? How much it will be based on the current price? So what I ask you to do and also the other class to do is to go back and measure the houses. And also, once you measure the houses, you can actually um, see uh, the prices at different locations. And at the same time, you can also see prices for different category of building. For example, some of you live in apartments. Some of you live in um, terrace houses. Some of you live in condominium, you know. So sometimes uh, some of you live in um, uh, quarters houses. So all these um, prices, uh, different categories of buildings, will require uh, different uh, different um, uh, pricing. So uh, we are going to go and have a look at that um, while waiting for me to to issue you yeah because what i want to do today class right adam uh do you have a class a soft coffee a soft copy of the class list you have it raw can you but is it in soft copy Okay, what you can do is beside, uh, beside the name, okay, beside each and every student's name, I want you to add another three more columns. The first column will be a category of houses. Maknanya pelajar akan letak whether it is a flat, double story, terrace houses. Then second, second column next to the that category of building, I want you to letak uh uh tadi room tadi category kan berapa tingkat satu tingkat ke dua tingkat lepas tu column yang ketiga location okay column yang keempat harga ya yeah, harga rumah yang kawan-kawan you kira and then column yang kelima cost per meter square okay so sama-sama you dengar dengan i ni kalau you boleh buat column tersebut let me repeat again first column is category Second column is category maksudnya flat ke, semi-detached ke. Lepas tu second column is uh, rumah tu description dia apa. Uh, satu story, dua story, dua setengah tingkat. Location dia apa. Okay, third column is location. Lepas tu berapakah prices of rumah tersebut. Alright, dan akhir sekali adalah cost per meter square ataupun cost per square feet. Depending on how you measure the building. Alright. So we have that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I let uh, your class rep do that, but I am more interested to continue with my lecture. While he did that, I will come back to you, and I let you share with me what is the um, what is the estimates of your houses at every places. Okay, right, right. So let me just go here for the time being. Some. Uh, recap since yes, I recap balik just in case some of you still wondering apa dah jadi apa kami tak ingat you know baru last week kan so what we did or what we say last week ialah we look at several sources of cost data we see that sources of data available in so many forms technical press yeah and it has its own advantages and disadvantages. We said that if we, let's say, we document all the prices and kita jilidkan di dalam dokumen, kita buat bulan Januari, kita habis jilid bulan 6, kita nak hantar publication bulan 7. By the time it reach the public for the users, is dah bulan 12. So, 11 bulan telah berlalu daripada tarikh kita kumpul data. So, maksud dia apa? Maksud dia, even cost data yang you kata current pada masa you kutip itu tak lagi current pada masa ia sampai kepada pengguna. So, advantage is uh, cost data yang di, 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 dibukukan ini macam akadise, macam pocket cost book, semua itu selalu diupdatekan. Every single year, diupdate. 
tahun 2002, 2003 supaya kita boleh tengok ya kenaikan harga. Kita juga suka dalam di buku kan ni senang. It's just one stop center ya. Ha, kalau kita tengok buku dia ada dalam tu ada cost data, dalam tu ada description, dalam tu ada what do you call it um, if information you know uh, elaborations as, as as soon as um, as, as you want lah whatever whatever you want to to get yeah so it will actually give you together with the cost data the disadvantage is that because it's a book so kita tak boleh nak print banyak-banyak because it's very costly yeah so kita akan dapati bahawa uh, information pula perlulah di update kan dan sebagainya alright now kita ada macam-macam jenis uh, macam kat UK dia orang ada buku yang sangat tebal nama dia Spawn Architect and Builder Price Book Hatchie Lexton Griffith dalam ini dia letak semua sekali cost for uh, mis, uh, materials for, for building for location whatsoever but however Malaysia we don't have it we only have a small pocket books yeah, produced by NY3C, produced by the surveyor sometimes, produced by so many other institutions for private consumption. Sometimes for their own consumption, sometimes they release it to public. Sometimes they actually publish online, sometimes they don't. They don't. They keep it private. All right. The, the disadvantage um, when you have in uh, price book, uh, you documented in price book, uh, it is prepared in advance so it's subject to changes in terms of location, market condition, contract condition etc etc so you need to adjust okay you need to update and adjust if you got it from the price book we also have BCIS, BCIC building cost information center in Malaysia but that is already old historical case book Okay, now we have BCISM. So, kalau boleh pangkahkan BCIC ni, okay, kita tak nak dah this one, yeah. This one is uh, no longer relevant to Malaysia. Sekarang kita melihat kepada BCISM. BCISM. Yeah, yang berdepat di pekah hijau. Yeah. Now, we also have, uh, what I call it, BCIS, Building Cost Information centers um, in UK. All right, in Malaysia we have BCISM. Let me just get that correct. Let me just put this, never mind, just put it slightly below here. All right, so we have that. All right, so um, these are available and you can refer to but if you need to get uh, complete references, you need to subscribe, pay some money. For private institution is 1,000. Kalau you ITM bayar 1,000, you ITM boleh dapat masuk ke dalam uh, what do you call it? BCISM. Alright. So, a very famous source of cost data as I would say to you is the bills of quantities. Dalam bills of quantities, kita akan dapati banyak cost data related to the unit, uh, meter, meter cube and meter square. And the good thing about uh, getting cost data from BQ adalah BQ ni kebanyakannya dibuat oleh contractor based on the standard ataupun description given by the quantity surveyor. So naturally when you have a uh, bills of quantity, it very close to resemble the current projects. Okay, mostly current projects. However, due to the uh, due to the uh, uh, point in time. BQ kan kadang-kadang kita dah kita dah tender lama-lama dah barulah kita uh, uh, boleh guna BQ tersebut ya untuk references ya ianya juga uh, selalunya kena update lah however uh, things that you must remember every project is unique so setiap BQ tu kalau you nak guna you kena check lah preliminary you sama ke dengan preliminary dalam BQ location dia sama ke Kadang-kadang dalam BQ ni, kontraktor dia sengaja buat salah. Dia sengaja uh, tinggikan sikit harga daripada harga sebenar. So, it's subject to deliberate distortion. Ada error katakanlah uh, poin titik perpulahan RM2.50 jadi RM25.50. Ya, yeah. uh, sometimes contractor use their own uh, 
supply prices, availability of labor, financial condition difference, special condition they require, for example, special hoist or special uh, green uh, green building features, you know. So, kadang-kadang bangunan you tak ada, tapi bangunan dia ada. Atau bangunan dia tak ada dalam BQ, bangunan you ada. So, there you have to make a certain adjustments. Alright. So, I did say about that already. I'm just going to revise saja, okay. Uh, Alright. Economic conditions also very different. Sometimes inflation will affect costing, SST, GST, whatever introduced by the government as part of your tax is will be very good, okay? Now, that comes to the next point. Whatever you do, whichever rates you use, which is already historical atau lama, sama ada semalam atau 10 tahun lepas, kita kena adjust. Adjust according to the size of the projects, adjust according to applications, adjust according to the rates, you know, fluctuations, you know, material prices, etc, etc. All right, we also have, all right, uh, labor courses, uh, profit or overhead. Contractor kan, bila dia bertanding, dia tak sama overhead and profit. Sebab tu harga tender berlainan. So, we must imagine, yeah, some contractor use a very high overhead and profit, some don't. All right, so I think that's enough for last, last week. Okay, today we are going to look at index. Okay, index. What is index? Apa tu index ya? Yeah? Saya guna banyak uh, perkara kat sini. Dia mungkin sama dengan you all. Dia mungkin lain. Okay. So, saya nak cakap what is index terlebih dahulu. Okay. Kita nak cakap index. Dan apakah kegunaan index? Okay. Let me just uh, gunakan uh, words ni. Yeah. Okay, untuk Alright I hope you boleh nampak Tak nampak cakap kat saya ya Allah. Okay can you see I hope you can see right Okay alright So bila kita bercakap tentang index ya, Let me just go there And go and draw Index atau indices. Semua nampak kan? Nampak. So apa tu index? Index ni bukan hanya pada tender price index or building cost index. Kadang-kadang kita ukur inflation index, population index. Kadang-kadang kita ukur macam-macam uh, jenis index ya. Yeah? Tak kisah dalam industri apa sekalipun. So apa Apakah fungsi indeks? Itu yang kita nak tahu secara uh, general terlebih dahulu sebelum kita pergi kepada spesifik. Sebenarnya indeks ni dia measure okay, the changes. Okay, changes ni kita guna perkataan, uh, kita guna triangle macam ni. Yeah. Dia measure the changes of good and services Okay, saya guna jari saya saja, saya tak guna uh, pen ke whatever Okay, measure the good changes of the cost ke, price ke, tak kisahlah you nak measure cost ke, price ke of the good and services ataupun apa-apa juga yang lain here from one point in time to another. Okay, ni catik ya. Eh? From one point in time to another. Maksud dia apa? Katakanlah you nak measure inflation tahun 1900 oh wah, 1000 2021 2024 okay. Apakah indeks inflation ataupun index population pada tahun 2024. Okay, so kita kena tahu bahawa kita nak tahu 2024 sebelum 2024 ada 
2023 ada 2022 ada 2021 jadi apakah perbezaan harga ataupun kos ataupun tak kisahlah percentage ke increase ke of uh, berkulit changes of population dalam bentuk percentage ke whatever ke weightage ke ya constant ke daripada tahun 2021 kepada 2024. Jadi kita gunakan satu constant. Kita guna constant ataupun kita gunakan satu weightage. Okey. Jadi kita ambil satu base year. Base year kita adalah katakanlah 2020. Okey kita jadikan dia sebagai base year. Base year tu kita letak equal to 100 selalunya. Okey sebab apa kita guna base year adalah kerana kita nak kira increase daripada 100 weightage tersebut kenaikan dia jadi 101, 14, 18, 19. Kita kira daripada uh, 2020 base year. Apa pentingnya base year ini? Kenapa macam mana kita nak tahu base year apa yang kita pilih? Uh, kita nak compare uh, Uh, constant tersebut ya daripada 2020 kita kena pilih tahun di mana kita sebenarnya kita tak boleh pilih 2020. Kenapa kita tak boleh pilih 2020 sebagai base year sebab berlakunya COVID pada masa itu. Dua, 2019 pun berlakunya COVID. So kita kena datang kepada 2017. Kita guna base year dia sebagai 2017. Okay why kita guna 2017? Kerana pada tahun itu ekonomi agak stable, tidak ada sebarang abnormalities, benda-benda di luar jangka. Ekonomi tenang, uh, tidak ada peperangan, tidak ada perkara-perkara seperti hyperinflation, tidak ada covid dan sebagainya. So kita pilih uh, tahun yang melakunya uh, stability. So kita bagi nilai dia top 100. Okay. Basis. Saya bagi contoh saja ni ya. Okey. Dalam bentuk yang mudah supaya awak boleh faham. So daripada 2017 katakanlah kita bagi 100. Contohnya 2018 dia jadi 101 ke 200. You buat graf lah. You, you buat satu graf yang you padangkan uh, kenaikan harga kepada harga population tersebut kepada tahun yang you jadikan rahsia. Sehinggalah tahun 2024. Okey. Macam mana eh, you nak nak nak, nak bina uh, indeks tersebut, you kena ada sampel. Sampel, katakanlah dalam kes population, sampel population. Kita gunakan uh, 1,500 orang. ya yeah? uh, Lelaki maybe 50%, perempuan maybe, maybe 30%. Kalau kita gunakan inflation, kita gunakan uh, band lending rate. Eh, contoh ni kita kumpulkan ya. Yeah? Okey, itu kalau dia general. Baik, tetapi untuk bangunan, kita kena faham bahawa dalam bangunan kita ada cost index dan juga kita ada tender index. Dua perkara yang sangat penting. So, macam mana kita nak cari cost index dan tender price index ya. Apa yang kita boleh buat adalah kita tengok kenaikan harga bahan-bahan binaan ya untuk beberapa tahun kebelakangannya. Kebelakangan ini kita ambil katakanlah contoh, contoh saja ya. 50 hingga 80 sampel harga konkrit. Kita tengok harga konkrit meningkat daripada satu tahun ke satu tahun berapa persen. Dari situ, daripada situ kita boleh allocate constant. Baik, bagaimana juga dengan tender price index? Macam mana kita nak kira ni? Untuk tender price index, kita ambil tender document. Dalam tender document, adanya harga yang diberikan oleh kontraktor untuk pelbagai projek, katakanlah projek sekolah, projek apa jugalah. Dari situ kita dapat tengok kenaikan harga uh, 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 BQs ya. Dalam BQs tu, contoh kita ambil dua tiga trades, dua tiga elements. Berapakah kenaikan harga perkara yang sama? Contohnya 90mm stay bar kepada 90mm stay bar di tahun yang berlainan. Lepas tu kita akan tengok kenaikan harga tersebut berapa persen. And then daripada situ kita akan dapat uh, seladikan. Dia ada formula sebenarnya nak gunakan tender price index ni untuk calculate ni. But basically it's like that. Basically it's like that. I don't want to go in, into any data. Saya nak simplify things which is very difficult kalau kita tak faham. Okay. So 
Apa yang kita nak belajar kat sini adalah indeks. Apa kelebihan indeks? Apa kekurangan indeks? Yeah, what is index? What is? Dalam nota yang saya bagi dekat you ataupun Ros Anis bagi kat you ya. Uh, notanya agak uh, modern sikit daripada yang ini. So you can refer to that ya. Yeah? Uh, index kiraan ya. Boleh refer kedua-dua nota. Satu untuk tambahan, satu lagi untuk yang saya nak gunakan. Saya guna nota lama ya sebab nota ini senang untuk saya rujuk sebab saya ada letak saya punya own nota kat situ. Okey. Sebagai pada you tahu construction economy ni is uh, selalunya di, kita punya construction industry kan dia bergantung pada fluctuation. It's very dynamic. Berlaku kepada market condition. It selalu fluctuate, so all the prices, all the cost, labor, every single things that happening in the market conditions subject to fluctuations. Very rarely you know, we see uh, our country got so stable that the price of oil tak naik, the price of cement tak naik, hardly ever because it's very much depend on demand and supply, it's very much depend on the political Uh, political factors is very much depend on so many other uh, uh, social uh, political issues. So there is what we call economy uncertainties that can have a major impact on the construction industry and its continuous changes and it make pricing level become very volatile keep on changing from time to time in a short term and also in a very long term for different types of projects. All right. So as such, when we want to talk about macam mana kita nak update prices, which is, is already historical, we use a uh, tender price index and also building cost index. Yeah, these are the two indices that you need to know at this particular stage. All right, what is the difference between tender price index and building cost index? So far, can you listen to me? Boleh dengar tak semua? Can you still keep up with me? Yes. Right, good, yeah. Because saya bulan puasa setakat ni dah suara yang saya boleh pergi selalunya. Volume dia lagi besar, ya. Yeah? Tapi uh, I just arrived from the airport and straight away saya ada online uh, kursus tadi dengan uh, artificial intelligence macam mana kita guna AI to 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 actually provide the syllabus you know and now I'm moving to your lectures so and at the time I had a meeting dekat master builders I'm the board of director for master builder association so I'll come pergi kat sana bercakap lagi so I hope I can last my voice can last until this afternoon and I've been working last late last night as well with uh, Harriet Watt University in Scotland and Dubai so you can see lah my voice the volume of my voice is actually decreasing because of lack of sleep as well because I woke up at three o'clock and I go to the airport at five o'clock today all right so uh, uh, excuse me for that if you can't hear clearly you can just ask me to repeat again Okay, so basically the difference lies in the word price and cost. If you tengok perkataan tersebut yang, yang, yang samanya adalah indices, yang lainnya adalah the word price and cost, tender and building. Alright, so bila kita bercakap tentang price, apa maksud dia price, apa maksud dia cost. Jadi kita kena faham ya, if I guna balik, uh, yeah, if I just, let me just go back to my, 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 my chunting kan. Saya ni suka menconteng ya. Okay, let me just go back. I buka ni walaupun senang. Okay, so price. Oh yeah, price. Price equals, yeah, cost plus profit. Cost equal price minus profit. Okay. I hope you understand. So simple. Nothing so difficult about it. When we talk about when we talk about when we talk about building costs we talk about the building costs to contractor buat kontraktor yang kena beli barang kan so cost of material 
plant and also labor so basic so building cost ini actually incur by the contractor so bila dia nak buat bangunan dia kena beli bahan bedaan plants and labor all right so that is very simple straightforward nothing so difficult about it okay ni mr contractor So dia pakai labor plant materials okay all the building costs in order to produce a building bangunan apabila dia nak charge to the client they include a percentage of profit okay So, kalau kita buat definition lah kan, what is the difference between building cost and also price, cost and price, kita boleh kata cost to contractor in coming out with the building but it's price to the client because client kena belayar termasuk profit contractor charge sekali. So the difference between building cost and also tender price or oh sorry the work cost and price yeah because of the additional elements of profit contractor charge to the client. So I hope you can remember this because it's simple straightforward. All right. So let me just go back to my illustration. So look at the term price and cost. I hope you understand what is the difference between the two. All right. Let's look at price index terlebih dahulu. Can I just besarkan sikit supaya all of you boleh nampak? So price index is an output index that measure changes in the tender price. Apa yang berlaku? Ingat tak terangga kecil yang saya lukis tadi tu? So, changes in the tender price. Apa maksud tender price? Apa maksud price? Price adalah contractor punya cost campur a percentage profit yang contractor add and they charge client to pay for the building. Faham ya? So, that's what tender price is all about. Tender price is all about the price that client has to pay for his building to the contractor which include already an element of profit. Okay? So the index is calculated by considerations of building and construction cost, changes in market condition, types of contract, inflation, profit and overhead. I did say that already to all of you. The best index which should be used by QS because the client is most interested in how much he has to pay contractor which is standard price. The index is used to update historical cost data for estimating purposes and JKR is currently producing standard price index. Bukan JKR saja, NY3C pun ada, ACADAS pun ada. Okay, cuba saya pergi sikit, um, saya uh, uh, elaborate sikit nota yang ada dalam you punya ini, ok kalau kita bercakap tentang JKR lah TPI ya eh. kalau kita bercakap tentang JKR you can find in JKR punya uh, tu ya, eh. so tender price index ya, yeah. kalau JKR lah, kalau dalam dokumen JKR dia kata apa tau, it's a measure of the trend in contractor pricing level in acceptable tender for construction project, it help to establish a comparison between the pricing of tender and standard price base. I ingat tak cakap tak? Cakap tadi 2019 ke 2017 kita jadikan standard price base. In the context of JKR, which is Malaysian public TPI is guna, digunakan untuk monitor the changes. I ingat the changes of construction cost over time. Ingat tak saya kata tadi? index measure the cost of from one point in time to another point. 
time. Okay, here are some of the tender price index uh, with regards to JKR. Apa yang dia buat adalah untuk menghasilkan index, ia is calculated based on rates in the bills of quantity for projects where competitive tender has been received. So, dia orang pilih dahulu projek yang ada competitive tender, is exclude engineering, mechanical dan sebagainya where Uh, where works or value exceed 50% of the tender. Kalaulah M&E lebih daripada 50%, kita tak masukkan sebagai kita punya sampel. So, kita ambil lebih kurang uh, 100 atau 200 sampel of BQ yang ada rates mengenai dengan projek, kategori projek, etc. etc. Lepas tu kita normalizekan dia mengikut location sebab different places, different dia punya pricing etc. etc. Base year, ingat tak saya kata tadi, typically kita gunakan 2017, 2016. Kat sini dia gunakan 2016 where the index value is set to 1000. Betul tak saya cakap tadi? Ya? Yeah? So everything I cakap tadi sebenarnya ada dalam mana-mana ya. Saya just remember on top of my head je. Okay, that means that the changes are relative to the pricing level in 2016. Tadi saya guna perkataan uh, uh, tahun tu, cuma 2017. And it is uh, always updated every uh, quarterly and the purpose is to help everybody, all the players, construction players, to understand bahawa construction cost and price ini evolving. Selalu menaik. So, dia, kita, dia bagi kita some benchmark ataupun clue lah what is the increases of prices from time to time. Alright. Kalau kalau kita tengok pula dokumen lain, kita tengok NY3C lah. Saya go further. Okay. Ini, ini saya petik daripada N3C. NY3C dia kata tender price index measure the trends of con contractor in price level. The aim is to compare between ah, sama, lebih kurang sama dengan JKR juga. Ah, dia pun guna 2016 juga. Okay. Ah, this is what reckoned by CIDP. Okay lah. Okay. So consistent lah ya. So ingat tender price index track the progression of contractor price level in approved tender from time to time and the goal is to see how different are these standard prices according to uh, from the, the 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 weightage is given compared to the standard base here. Alright, so saya nak stop sini sekejap. Let me just go and pause a little bit. I'm going to go and um, stop presenting. Okay, I'm going to approach all of you here. Semua ada kat sini, sekarang 27 orang. Okay. Ada Dr. Ros. Kat sini ada Dr. Ros ada kat sini. Dah masuk dah Dr. Ros. Dr. Ros ni ada? Oh ada tu eh? Ada, ada. Ah okay, okay. Alright. Uh, saya terlupa nak inform doktor. Uh, kita lambat sikit hari ni. I hope you get the message because saya sebenarnya daripada airport tadi and then I attend the open learning on artificial intelligence um, Uh, macam mana nak buat uh, construction of syllabus guna AI. Now I have bersambung-sambung lah. Pukul 11 dengan students. Okay alright. So ladies and gentlemen. Let just recap ya. Saya tak nak saya seorang je belajar kat sini kan. So let just recap what we say just now. To make sure you understand. Okay. Irdina. Irdina are you there? Yes Bonda. Okay what is the difference between price and cost? Uh, uh, price is uh -huh. cost plus profit. Yes, cost plus profit. Okay, alright. What is the difference between yeah? Uh, building cost and tender price. What is the difference between building cost and tender price? Building cost is, repeat after me, building cost is? Building cost is? The cost incurred by the contractor. The cost incurred by the contractor. To pay for? 
to pay for to pay for apa dia to pay for what uh, the contractor no 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 eh. to pay for his Even building iyalah what client dia nak hasilkan building dia nak kena bayar apa the tender price no 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 you got it wrong listen very carefully what is a building cost is the cost incur by the contractor to pay to untuk apa untuk menjadikan bangunan apa yang kontraktor kena bayar material lagi uh, machinery machinery and plants okey lagi uh, betul Bekerja. Labor. Labor. Okay. Labor. All right. Okay. Baik. So you said that the contractor has to pay all that in order to actually uh, build a building. Ha, yang ni dia tak serah lagi kat client ni because bila nak serah kat client, they add additional overhead and profit. Yeah, that will turn it into price. Okay. Ataupun uh, tu, uh, what you call it, you can call it uh, prizes to the client lah. Baik. Now, saya nak tanya Irdina lagi. Okay. Kalau kita bercakap tentang uh, building material contohnya, adakah harga bangunan stagnant antara satu tahun dengan satu tahun? You know what it, it, it means by stagnant? Uh, no, Bonda. What it means? Siapa tahu what it means by stagnant? Apa maksud dia? Is it like there's no any growth? Yes, there's no changes. That means it's static, isn't it? So, Irdina, adakah bahan-bahan binaan harganya static setiap tahun? Static. No. No, no. No. Kenapa tidak? Tetap. Kenapa harga bangunan makin lama makin mahal? Kenapa? But depends on the economy. Yeah, market condition, demand, demand. betul tak? Social yeah. economic factors, inflation, etc. etc. So apabila bangunan, harga bangun, harga bahan, bahan meningkat, macam mana kita measure perubahan harga? Kita guna apa? Um, Yang lain boleh tolong. Kita guna apa? Guna base ya. No, no. Kita guna apa? Cost in. Ya, yeah, kita guna indices. Kita gunakan indices untuk measure perubahan harga yang berlaku daripada satu masa kepada satu masa. That's what indices all about. It measure the changes from one point in time to another point in time. Bonda tak akan bergerak selagi you all tak faham. Sebab tu dalam kelas Bonda, lagi pelajar tak faham, Bonda tak akan alih bahagian mengaji Quran. Ha. Kalau kita mengaji Quran, lagi you tak faham satu benda, Bonda tak akan proceed to the next. Uh, so Bonda make sure you faham terlebih dahulu. Okay, kita pergi pada Isatul. Isatul, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, yes, I'm What is price? Hello, Izato. What is price? Price um. Ada tak bonus masa bonda aja tadi? Atau lesak ke mana ni? Ada tak? Ada tapi tadi pergi tandas kejap. Ah, siapa suruh pergi tandas? Ha, siapa suruh pergi tandas? Okay, kenapa tak bawa handphone pergi tandas? Okay, alright. Kita bolehlah kata dia pergi tandas. Sekejap betul ke sekejap tu Izzato? Alright. Bonda nak check sebab Bonda tahu ada yang duduk dalam kelas, ada yang uh, tidur tak atas katil, ya. Yeah? So kalau bonda suruh on serta-merta ni menggelabah you all ni kan Sebab bonda kata hari tu semua kena on camera Tapi minggu ni bonda fahamlah 
uh, tapi boleh um, before end of the class kena buka kamera. Itu biasa lah kan ambil gambar. Macam mana nak ambil gambar tak buka kamera. Baik kita pergi kepada Aida Liana. Aida are you there? Uh, yes Bunda. Okay pergi tandas tak? Mm, tak. Ah, So dengarlah ke tadi? So apa maksud mm. dia? Uh, price? Um, price yang cost plus profit Yes, cost plus profit So dalam bahasa yang mudah Price adalah, what is it? Price uh, is price the amount the is amount, the amount. after me Repeat after me Price is the amount Price is the amount Paid Paid By client By client To whom? To the contractor. Yes, to the contractor. And it consists? Jawablah, mm -hmm. ikutlah. And it consists? Uh, then it consists? An element of? An element of? Ah. Uh, material. Eh. Huh? Kejar you ni. <laughs> An element of? Element of? Um, building No, anybody help her? Element of Pro Apa dia? Profit Profit The amount paid by the client To the contractor Which include an element of profit Okay So dia bukan harga bayar harga raw kontraktor buat kerja tak. Dia bayar lebih sikit daripada apa yang kontraktor spend. This is such a very fundamental. Saya faham kenapa pelajar tak dapat sampai 0607. Dia tak faham. What is the different building between building cost index dengan tender price index? Sebab apa? Sebab dia tak faham perkataan price and cost. Dia tak, dia tak faham fungsi indisis tu apa. So you all janganlah anggapkan benda ni alah kacang saja. Ya, yeah? you must understand there is a difference between the word cost and price, building cost and tender price. So saya pergi pada Adam sekarang. Adam, are you there? Okay, Adam. Okay, when we talk about tender prices, where do we get data? To build the tender prices. Where do we get the data? Daripada mana kita dapat data tu? Nak construct tender prices ni? Ah, Rates daripada mana? Kat mana you dapat rates? Rates. Measure rates dapat daripada mana? Dalam tender document, kat mana you dapatkan rates? You all QS. Hai hari buat. PQ. Okay. You got the rates from the PQs. Okay. Berapa banyak sample BQ yang you kena guna untuk dapatkan Uh, harga yang kita boleh normalize later. Berapa banyak sampel? 50 to 100. Okay. Subject to the category of project. Some project tak banyak sampel. Contohnya project tu project rail kan. Ada 10 je bangunan ataupun ada kadang-kadang 5 bangunan dan sebagainya. Okay. So you dapatkan daripada situ. Okay. Bagus. So in order to build the tender prices, you need to get Uh, samples of uh, prices uh, in, from the measured rates from various trades ya yeah? from the various trades in the deals of quantity. Okay, saya pergi kepada Aida Hazirah. Aida Hazirah. Yes, Wanda. Yes, Aida Hazirah. Okay. Alright. So, tadi kita dah cakap pasal where we get the tender indices. Okay. Untuk construct constant atau weightage, kita kena ada apa yang dinamakan sebagai apa tu? Yang kita equal to 100 tadi. Kita panggil dia pakai sebagai apa? 
Sample. Bukan. Kita kata equal to 100 tadi. Kita nak measure from one point in time. Daripada mana tu? Daripada apa? Ya, yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Alright. Saya pergi kepada Nur Fahira. How to... No, Fahira, how to spell your, how to pronounce your name by the way? Ah, uh, Yes, boleh. Uh, Fahira. Ada silent G ke? Uh, Fagi, I think H is silent. Silent H, okay. Fahira, ya? Yeah? Uh. Okay, good. Silent H. I have to ask your father and your mom about that. Why you have to silent the H or the, the, the G? Okay, all right. Uh, listen to Bonda very carefully Sebab Bonda kata dah Bonda tak akan move on until you faham Okay Okay, kenapa 2016 tadi dipilih sebagai base year? Because there's no anything activity in the no. economy No, salah tu Aktiviti dalam ekonomi banyak Tahun itu adalah tahun yang Siapa boleh cakap? Full employment Stable No Yelah COVID Ya, yeah, no COVID No war Nothing Kalau dalam bahasa, kalau you baik tengok dalam buku-buku lah Saya ni tak payah tengok buku semua dalam kepala saya Dia kata there is no ab abnormalities Happen in that particular Tidak ada perkara-perkara di luar jangka Berlaku seperti tidak berlakunya Gempa bumi, inflation rate quite steady Etc, etc You know, adakah kita boleh buat 2020 sebagai base ya? No Kenapa Fajira? Kenapa? Because of the COVID-19 COVID COVID telah menangkap kita dalam surprises. We got caught in COVID without we expect it happen. Okay, Sabrina, do you expect COVID to happen? You dah tahu dah, you dah ramalkan dua tahun akan datang, kita akan duduk dalam rumah, tak keluar rumah dan kita tak akan jumpa orang, kita tak boleh peluk orang. Have you ramal that already? Uh, no. Never yeah, in your life. Betul tak? No. Tak pernah terfikir di kepala otak kita bahawa kalau dah saya ni peramal dan saya kata dekat you Oh you tahu tak Alif, dua tahun akan datang kita semua akan terperangkat dalam rumah tak boleh keluar Dua tahun pula tu jangka masa dia Alif kata Allah puan hasil mati you are a crazy person you know That kind of thing Because it, it caught us by surprise So for that kind of year Yeah you can't use it as what you call it um uh, A base year because there are so many Uh, unpredictabilities ya yeah? Benda yang segala yang berlaku zaman COVID tu Berlaku kematian uh, Rumah tak dapat berjalan Projek tak dapat berjalan dan sebagainya Okey, betul kita nak bercakap pasal index Tetapi index akan membawa kita memikirkan bahawa Even nak construct index pun Kita kena tahu Bila kita nak buat Kat mana kita nak ambil data Kat mana weightage yang kita nak letak Bagaimana kita nak projek kita punya indeks dan sebagainya Ya kalau you Saya boleh mengajak A to Z pasal indeks ni Dengan gunakan formula dan sebagainya Sebab saya memang uh, Daripada zaman saya muda lagi We have to construct our own indices Dia ada formula dia square root of apa apa pun You masuk je berapa sampul But I don't want to go into any details Because saya tak nak confuse you with so complex uh, complex information for the time being I would just want to go on the fundamental level Okay, saya nak tanya Dr. Anis Anis Rosniza Anis Rosniza ada nak tambah apa-apa pasal indeks? No wonder Okay, can, can we proceed ya? Yeah? Kita boleh proceed Okay, alright Ladies and gentlemen, kita proceed Sekarang you all faham itu Yang lain tolong ya yeah? Jangan skip classes because kalau you tak faham fundamental you tak akan faham sampai kan zero sets ada pelajar dia tak tahu perbezaan antara approximate quantities dengan approximate estimate walaupun dia dah zero five. Ada pelajar yang tak faham perkataan preliminary item dengan preliminaries. Itu adalah satu perkara yang tak dapat dimaafkan ya. 
Alright, so kita bercakap tentang cost index pula, okay? Cost index is what we call it an output index, ya. Yeah? That measure changes over time. Remember, tolong gariskan. Kalau you ada highlighter, tolong gariskan perkataan measure changes over time. And then also gariskan perkataan resource cost iaitu labor plant material dan gunakan perkataan incur. Incur ni dialami experience by contractor. I have to explain to you all the words just in case. All of you don't really understand the vocabulary here. Okay, so the cost incurred by the contractor. And each of them has their own tax. Because of what? Tadi kawan kita kata, oh, material fluctuates every year. So, kita ada perubahan harga measure changes of material prices over time. Harga plants, changes of plants over time. Labor, kita kena baca macam category of labor. Kita ada trader, kita ada uh, skill labor, gang labor, kita ada unskill labor, kita ada uh, direct labor, macam-macam jenis bentuk labor yang kita ada. So, uh, kita kena faham bahawa ha, dulu nak bayar, zaman saya belajar ya, unskill labor RM30 je, satu hari bekerja. Sekarang unskilled labor dah 70 to 90 ringgit. Skilled labor dulu 70. Sekarang skilled labor dah 150, 170 depending on trades. Okay. Alright. Overall cost of the building, different types of buildings. Yep. So there is a lot of methods and calculation to arrive at this particular index. Yep. They are going to scientific method to calculate the prices. Okay, contoh price of semen. Okay, semen meningkat daripada dulu zaman saya boleh beli RM13 satu beg semen. Ya, Portland semen tu RM13. Sekarang dah RM18.50 baru-baru ni kalau you beli secara berasingan bukan pukal, you boleh dapat RM21 ordinary Portland semen. Ya, sebab berlakunya inflated price. Ya, kadang-kadang tak baik juga ya. Supplier dia sorok. Uh, supply semen supaya harga tu meningkat baru dia keluarkan. Macam nak raya ni kita sorok gula, kita sorok tepung supaya harga naik barulah supplier keluarkan. Okay. Same thing with building materials. Okay. Now where do we get the cost uh, building cost index? Kita dapati daripada statistical department. But it's not only that ya. Kita boleh dapat daripada GKR, kita boleh dapat daripada NY3C, kita boleh dapat daripada Arcadise, kita boleh dapat daripada uh, price books and also press, technical press. Saya pernah tengok dalam newspaper bawah perniagaan, ya, dia tunjuk indeks-indeks semasa. Okay, so banyak. Cuma, what you have to be very careful is that every index, ada dia punya own assumptions, ada dia punya own base year, ada dia own punya caption or clauses. So that is where you have to be very cautious. You must use the same one consistently in your estimates. All right. We've done that. There is another important index that, okay, that is uh, very important for you to understand. Last week we talk kawan rumah mak you yang ada enam bilik ke tujuh bilik ke yang, eh no, bilik air dia ada lima ke enam last, last week ya yeah, in Johor Bahru. So saya cakap kat dia macam mana agaknya saya nak buat rumah macam tu dekat KL. Oh dia kata mesti mahal lagi puan. Of course lah lagi mahal sebab KL adalah uh, uh, tu KL adalah city uh, urban area. So urban area high standards of living. So um, what do you call it? The, the, the harga might be a lot more higher. What's 900 million in Johor Bahru could be 1.5 million here. Uh, in, in uh, sorry, 900 thousands in Johor Bahru could be 1.5 million here in uh, Shah Alam. Contoh, yeah. All right. So for this, JKR has prepared um, what do you call it? Log like lo location according to demography, yeah. Demography of places whereby they group together same places that have certain locality factors. For example, if you are in per uh, Perlis, Kedah and Pulau Pinang, yeah, you are in location A 
and the index is 1.167. Nanti kita akan gunakan index ni to show how or what we're going to actually uh, up, uh, update yeah, the location factors yeah, using some of these indices. Okay. B, para is a standalone. Okay, the, the location, uh, locality factors is 1.06. You have also C, Selangor, Wilayah Persekutuan. Interestingly, yeah, neg Negeri Sembilan and Melaka is also being grouped to Selangor. Johor, yeah, on its own, Pahang, Terengganu and Kelantan is 1.04. Okay, now Alif, yang mana yang paling tinggi, yang mana paling rendah Alif? Ya, Madam. Yang mana locality factor yang paling tinggi? Yang mana locality factor yang paling rendah? Um, paling tinggi paling rendah, ya. Ya? Um, F paling rendah, Madam. Eh, paling tinggi F. Paling tinggi yang paling rendah? Paling tinggi... Paling rendah C. Hmm? Paling tinggi A. Paling tinggi A, paling rendah C. 1.167 C. Pernah terfikir tak kenapa dia rendah, kenapa dia tinggi? Walaupun you kata, eh secara logiknya kan Selangor bila persekutuan yang paling dia tinggi. Dia kenapa agaknya? Agak-agaknya kenapa? Ya, yeah, kenapa Johor D 1.057, uh, kenapa Terengganu 1.04. Walaupun tak banyak beza, kenapa agaknya? Okey, ini soalan bonda nak tahu jawapan dia tahu minggu depan. Bonda nak tahu kenapa agaknya. Kalau ikutkan logik, pemikiran ya, logik ya, kita kata bahawa ya, lokasi macam wilayah persekutuan tu lebih tinggi. Ya, daripada kawasan-kawasan yang sekitarnya. Tetapi kita juga kata, bang dia bagi sikit hints ya. Because the difference in locations implies so many different fact, uh, so many different things as well. Contoh je, kita bercakap tentang, saya ambil yang, yang paling uh, very uh, interesting uh, area yang saya biasa guna, kapit ya. Uh, for materials uh, kat sana agak murah Tetapi untuk pergi kepada kapi You have to use a lot of transportation To go there via the jalan laut You know uh, Etc, etc So it will inflate the price According to the remoteness of the area uh, Macam contohnya One of my student did a thesis About uh, building material prices And locality uh, Dia buat di Pasir Gudang Johor Ya yeah? Di mana terdapat banyak projek-projek oil and gas di Pasir Kudan. Interestingly, prices dia agak lebih tinggi daripada kawasan di Shah Alam ataupun di uh, wilayah persekutuan. Sebab dia kata nak bawa masuk dalam remote area all those uh, apa tu, building materials involve tons of lorries that currently. So it does have some impact on the overall pricing and hence on the overall indexes as well because remember index measure changes yeah, changes due to different happening yeah, different happening from one point to another point so it include various factors yeah social econ uh, equal up to uh, transportations uh, inf uh, inflations etc etc so i will come back to you next week saya tak nak guna ini lagi because that doesn't really important for the time being. Maintenance index. This is to measure the cost of maintenance. There is no such index in measure. Ini tak betul ya. Eh? Ini tak betul. Okay sebab ini nota lama. Kita dah ada building cost maintenance index sekarang. Nanti dalam nota powerpoint yang yang Dr. Anis bagi ataupun Dr. KP, uh, KB bagi dia dah cakap ya. Eh? Kita dah ada building cost maintenance index sekarang. Alright, so masa nota ni belum ada lagi Okay, so dah ada uh, Even kita ada index for minor work and major works So, uh, bergantung lah yeah, Whether you want to do this project You have to use the index yeah? As this particular semester It doesn't concern you that much Because kita concentrate on the two Now, what is the purpose of index again? Very, very simple Kita want to measure cost to the contractor Whereas 
the tender price index measure cost to the client. Okay, the cost incur to the contractor is called yeah, building cost. The measure of the cost to contractor kita panggil building cost index. The cost to the client include an element of profit. We call it price. And we call it measure changes of the building price. We call it tender price. Index, you know, ataupun there are indices, yeah, cost indices. Yeah. So this is just something that I keep on saying to all of you again and again. Kalau you all terlupa, yeah, um, I cannot forgive you. Basically, I cannot forgive you because this is just a basic, basic, basic terminologies. Okay, any index based on a particular forms of construction using the domain form of material combinations of Component cannot be relied upon to form a realistic assessment other than for that category of work. Saya kena letak portion. Ramai orang tak tahu ya. Kalau bangunan you banyak M&E work, kita tak boleh guna bangunan tersebut sebagai sampel untuk kita letak uh, untuk cari harga measured rates bagi purpose of construction of index. Okay. Kalau you bangunan itu katakanlah ataupun bangunan projek tersebut menggunakan too much of materials. Contohnya steel structure. Yang saya nampak adalah contoh ya bird nest stadium. Bird nest stadium pukul rata ya satu bangunan tu dibuat oleh uh, structure steel. So untuk bangunan tersebut kita tak boleh gunakan walaupun dia sports complex kita tak boleh nak ambil dia kita kena create that in isolation dia sahaja. Because it's not realistic. Kita nak bangunan yang mempunyai material-material yang mempunyai material yang kata orang uh, represent standard specifications. Tadi abnorm no ab abnormalities. Ini no ab abnormalities in terms of specifications. Sebab tu bila kita nak buat index, salah satu kita kena perkara kita kena buat, kita kena compare apple with apple, pair with pair. So kita tengok juga, jangan ambil measure rate sahaja. Tengok pula, kan? Dia punya uh, specification dia apa? Tengoklah dalam ruangan specification before you take it out of context. Kadang-kadang, you compare rumah Ali Syukri dengan Datuk Seri Beda, ya, dia punya tombol uh, apa tu, Uh, pilih air pun tap, uh, water tap pun daripada gold chrome. Uh, tak tahulah gold betul ke gold chrome kan. So you can compare that rumah yang standard size untuk rumah biasa yang mak ayah kita buat yang we don't prepare for that kind of uh, extra wanga I call it. Okay. Uh, compared to uh, we just use the normal item. So kadang-kadang the word norm ya. Yeah? What do we use in norm? Ya, yeah, normal, normal, normal yang kita guna normal dalam standard specifications. Ya, yeah. items yang kita masukkan dalam index ya, yeah, is very very simple that we try to select items which is readily available. Ah, this is another important point. Sometimes there are items which is rare, susah nak dapat. Saya teringat saya buat satu project a couple of years back lama dah, about 20, 30 years back. I was 20. 26, I was working in firms. Firms tu indah antah by water. Antah by water adalah belong to the royalty of Negeri Sembilan. Dia buat projek empangan air. Semua empangan air tu kebanyakannya belong to antah by water ke belakang-belakang uh, kon kontraktor dia adalah keluarga dia raja semuanya ya. The, the royal family of Negeri Sembilan. No, I remember as a QS there most of the material used for the construction of a uh, reservoir ataupun empangan air adalah datang daripada luar negara. Yeah, most of the material imported from UK. Yeah, and then bila masuk ke dalam Malaysia, they impose an import tax. Okay, and then it will inflate the price because they are the import tax. Okay, untuk bahan-bahan materials yang banyak menggunakan foreign uh, foreign source ya kita kena group group it separately awak jaga kata eh tak ada banyak tak kalau you go to miri bintulu kalau you go dekat port kat sana there is one port dekat dekat uh, dekat Sarawak yang mana si IDB pergi pantau ke masukkan barang-barang material daripada luar negara untuk di dalam digunakan dalam projek oil and gas, uh, petrochemical plant dan sebagainya. 
Okay, untuk projek-projek sedemikian, we have to group them separately. Okay, alright. The weightage of items. Items in the index must be weight, weighted according to their importance. Ha. What do you mean by that? Okay, let's say kan kita buat concrete. Kita nak measure uh, weightage for building building concrete. Okay, now if let's say it is a reinforced concrete or in situ concrete lain, lain pasal eh, reinforced concrete ke whatever. Kita tahu to make up the concrete tu, the make up of concrete, you have a lot of a lot of things inside the concrete. You have cement, you have also plasticizer, you have kadang-kadang cement tu ada bagai jenis high aluminium cement, uh, rapid hardening cement, that kind of thing. And also dalam contohnya precast ataupun dalam ready mix concrete, you also have uh, many other elements. But what are the majority of element that make up that particular material? So that one is become the focus of your weightage. Katakanlah daripada 100% uh, concrete punya concrete punya compositions, 80% is make up of cement. So naturally kan. Yeah? Cements and harga semen uh, ke, 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 ke perubahan harga semen definitely will effect kerja-kerja konkrit. -kerja ya sebab itu kadang-kadang kita tak boleh measure index ni in isolations. Kita tak boleh kata oh saya nak measure harga konkrit tak. First of all you kena tengok juga. Ya yeah? nak measure harga konkrit kena tengok compositions of the building materials. Ya yeah? semen dia kalau ada prikas ada besi dia dan sebagainya. So you have to look at those and then say to yourself among all those materials, which materials actually represent, uh, they call it uh, the biggest compositions. Uh, dia banyak ya, sebab kita nak guna formula ni, kita nak choose ya. Uh, prices akan banyak. So which, whichever price you want to choose is something that I think, uh, what do you call it, all the uh, people that involved in construction of index can do it. One of my students, uh, Yusuf Khalid, uh, now memang buat index ya. So... Uh, he will tell you there are quite a number of formulas that he used to actually forecast uh, the indexes of building materials and uh, also cost index. But I wouldn't be bother all of you to belajar index because you bukan sebagai seorang uh, index constructor. You are a quantity survey. You just uh, implement, adopt and also uh, apply sahaja. Okay. Now, um, Look at this. Yeah. Ini yang saya katakan sebagai weightage sahaja. Katakanlah kerja brickwork kan. Brickwork, kalau kerja brickwork ada apa? Brick, mortar dan labor. Antara banyak-banyak ni, yang mana paling, kalau cebok brickwork ya, apa yang majority dia? Mestilah dia buat daripada brick. So, you tengok. Brick majority. Tetapi, tetapi, ya, yeah, uh, kita kena faham, ya, yeah, bahawa uh, bricks, bricks pula, ada macam-macam jenis bricks ya. Macam banyak jenis bricks. Contohnya ada semen and sand. Ada macam-macam bricks. So you in order for you to decide the weightage ya yeah, of all this you kena for brick work you kena tengok weightage of every single compositions of item that make up that brick work. Ya. Yeah. Contohnya for example for this work okay bricks uh Bricks uh, two uh, eight zero zero okay, mortar three hundred labor one thousands, and then you put against it an index yeah base year weightage is twenty. They got harga base year yeah every year naik lah. Kalau dua ribu enam belas dua puluh sampai dua ribu dua puluh weightage nya seratus empat puluh. They got base year. Mortar base base year weightage dia dua daripada dua tiga sampailah seratus lima puluh. Ya base year base year weightage for labour lapan. Ya sampailah seratus dua puluh lima. So those are the weightage for each and individual work according to the significant items and base year. Okay because base year dia uh, this is not uh, I have to caution with you. The weightage for base year is different from base year for tender price index which is consistent throughout the whole uh, calculation. 
the weightage for TPI hanya aja satu tahun saja. 2016 contohnya. Dulu zaman saya 1980 dibagi a title of 100. Tetapi untuk materials ya, yeah, kita tidak ada tender price index. Ya, yeah, kita kita hanya based on harga index daripada saat kita gunakan harga bricks yang agak stable. Harga bricks yang agak stable dengan mota dengan label berbeza according to demand and supply. So therefore kat situ dah dapatnya kelainan dari segi base year weightage. Alright. So I hope you can be clear on this. Tetapi apa yang paling pentingnya for you to describe to be the differences between what is BCL, bidding cost index and also tender price index. Okay. Now saya dah sebut dah. Sebenarnya saya tak tengok pun nota masa saya nak mengajar ya. Tapi apa yang saya sebut tadi semua dah cover by nota. So what is a base year? Tidak berlakunya unusual fluctuation. Saya gunakan perkataan there is no up, up, abnormalities or event. Yeah, it is a sound year. Aman, damai sahaja. Kalau ada sikit-sikit tu plus minus sahaja. Okay, harga emas pun stable sahaja. Okay. Method of construction, I dah sebut tadi, I don't want to go into any details, ya. Yeah. Kita ada guna mathematical formula, uh, kita boleh gunakan what we call it, samples from uh, prices of material, price of labor, price of plant, untuk tender price index pula, kita gunakan daripada tender document, kita ambil measured rate for different trades, different items, alright. What we need to say is that the compositions of index is based on representative sample and a combinations of component as such because dia hanyalah representative sample sometimes it's not that accurate all right so if the mix of material kalau kita cakap pasal material bukan kita cakap pasal tender price eh? pasal material tadi komponen yang make up that material macam concrete tadi berlainan dari segi lokasi berlainan dari segi material tu dah tak adil sangat ataupun untypical for the projects ya. Yeah. Jadi kalau kita gunakan itu sebahagian daripada compositions of nak kira our index, it will distort our index altogether. Saya pernah teringat saya buat satu projek di mana saya gunakan measured rates daripada BQ of the bathtub ya. Yeah. Bathtub. Bathtub tu sum index dia punya jenama bathtub tu and then dia adalah dia punya color, uh, dia punya uh, dimension dan sebagainya. So I send that for pricing. Contractor will price bila nak submit tender bids. Contractor raise a queries. Dia kata apa tau? Dia kata uh, dia punya dia punya saya punya yang ada dalam description BQ itu tidak lagi lagi ada dalam market. No longer being produced. Stop production. Okay, tetapi mujo saya tulis or any other equivalent. Ha. Saya kata or any other equivalent. Uh, Baftak kan. Kataan itu yang menyelamatkan saya. Tetapi bila berlakunya per, per, uh, perubahan dari segi demand, supply stop, stop productions, kita tak boleh ambil uh, material yang con continuously subjects to uh, kata orang fluctuation and demand and supplies. Okay. Uh, sekejap ada, sekejap tak ada. So kita teng kena tengok ha, this another satu benda indeks ini bergantung kepada taste and fashions. Pada satu masa demand dia meloncat naik. Saya bagi contoh yang paling mudah ya dalam produk ya. Satu masa dulu semua orang pakai crop slippers. Slipper crop slippers. Almost everybody Kata itu slippers untuk kesihatan. Now hampir tidak ada lagi penggunaan crop slipper. Adalah tapi jarang-jarang dan kadang-kadang saja. So untuk material yang seasonal macam itu kita tidak boleh gunakan harga dan juga bahan tersebut sebagai sebahagian daripada compositions untuk menjadikan index. So saya nak stop kat situ. So far so good. Boleh faham ke tidak? Hello. 
Boleh? Okay, alright. Thank you. Alright. Components outside index and substitute and obsolescence. Ah, saya dah cakap dah tadi ya. Eh. Obsolescence adalah produk that no longer being used. Dulu rumah mak-mak kita dibuat daripada siling asbestos. Termasuk rumah mak saya lah. Tapi asbestos ni toxic. So dia dah kena replace. So asbestos memang dah dianggap sebagai obsolescence. Kalau ada pun kena substitute. So all these things saya dah, saya dah sebut tadi tu. Ah, taste dan fashion saya pun dah sebut tadi ya. Kadang-kadang ha? kita berubah. Ha, berubah cita rasa. Alah dalam rumah. Rumah pembinaan rumah pun dulu famous sangatlah buat uh, apa nama dia uh, wallpaper. At one time kan wallpaper, wallpaper, wallpaper tau. Tapi yang wallpaper yang setengah tu kan ada satu kali lain. Lepas tu ada yang garis-garis kat atas, kat bawah tu taruh border betul tak? Tapi lah ni famous apa? Waste coating pula dah. Ha, waste coating. Setiap rumah dah scrape the wallpaper taruh waste coating. You see or not? The changes and fashion and taste of people so that benda tu kita tak boleh nak generate sangat lah uh, index as it is, is, is change. And human error is also another reason why sometimes index can be falsely uh, assumed uh, and wrongly calculated innocently tanpa tak sedar or cautiously dengan sedar. Okay? Alright, so there are lots of indexes selain daripada building cost indices. Kita ada BCA. BCMI, Maintenance Cost Indices, kita ada macam-macam jenis. Uh, saya tak nak go uh, into any of this but because this is um, in the UK, in Malaysia uh, kita use tiga ya. BC, B, uh, in UK kita ada BCIS, Building Cost Information Service. Kat, kat UK kita, uh, kita panggil BCIS, kat Malaysia last time, no more now. BCIC now kita refer to BCISM. Okay. And and what we see. Alright. So I said this again and again. Tolong baca. Tolong baca. Saya dah, saya dah banyak kali bercakap pasal ini. Kegunaan dia. Ah, Bila masa nak guna TPI? You all tak sabar yang nak guna TPI. Yeah, I'm sure. Ya yeah, kita gunakan um, untuk improve uh, our cost planning by bringing the cost of non-project in historical to cost data to a common level of comparison purposes using the index. Okay. Let's say for example, I have a project that I want to build and my project is very much similar from from that project in uh, katakanlah Kota Tinggi Johor. Alright. So what I can do is I can use standard price index to bring from the Johor point in time to the to the Kuala Lumpur or Sha'alam point in time. Okay, and I can compare which one is cheaper, which one is um, more expensive you, on the current current time, on the current time. Kalau you bawa harga 2020 kepada tahun semasa 2024, you can use that as a comparison. Yeah? It can be used to set a realistic cost target and cost limit. Definitely so. Lah. If you want to build a, a building and you want to have a cost limit for every element, for example, element substructure, superstructure, you use TPI or you use um, location indices for that matter to forecast whether um, uh, the building uh, represent the current prices. You ambil all, all, um, uh, all measure prices or all uh, price rates and you update your price rates to the current one and you can come up with the, uh, you update also your quality uh, in terms of specifications, um, you also adjust for the different in shape and sizes and after that you must know whether your building is more or less resembled in terms of um, complexities, then you can uh, establish your realistic cost target according to uh, the total amount of cost for the elements or also the cost per meter square for that particular element, okay? Uh, it might be um, quite uh, blur at the moment but later on as uh, we go through cost target you'll find that all these things is actually straightforward okay the individual tpi folder project can be used to evaluate specific price determinant such as location building type methods of construction yes of course definitely so you can use tpi 
if there is a let's say specific projects ya yeah, uh, contohnya ya yeah, kategori bangunan sekolah ya yeah. now JKR dia kadang-kadang dia buat TPI khusus untuk projek sekolah ya yeah, because projek sekolah ni berada di merata tempat dalam dua, dua bandar tetapi untuk projek sekolah sekolah ni banyak kategori sekolah bistari, sekolah asrama penuh, sekolah yang katakan wawasan dan sebagainya. All these schools ya, yeah, they difference in terms of specifications, they difference in terms of story height, they difference in terms of user requirement. So uh, we have to be very careful. Similarly with hospital, sometimes if you have too many hospital but you have to be very careful what type of hospital we're talking about, sometimes you have dedicated TPI for this particular projects. All right. So, okay, keen. All right. This is something very important. Yeah, the word keenness. The word keenness. What is doing? What What do we mean by the word keenness? Ah, saya tanya you all pula. What do we mean by keenness, everybody? What do we mean by keenness? Asyik saya je bercakap. Okay, what do you mean by keenness? Akila, what is keenness? Akila, yes. Um, apa yang dimaksudkan tender yang keen? Keenness. Like um, like something eager. Something what? Kuat sikit? Eager. Like no. something notice. No. Itu literal meaning ya, eh? literal meaning. Keen is eager. Okay, saya nak apa maksud dalam konteks ini? Kalau saya kata tender tu has a lot of degree of keenness, apa maksud saya? Ya, yeah, maksudnya adalah competitive. The tender is very competitive. Apa maksud dia competitive puan? Ha? Tanya macam tu pula kan? Apa maksud dia kompetitif Akila? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, saya bagi contoh bodoh-bodoh lah. Pergi bazar Ramadan kan? Saya tak pergilah. You all pergi pada bazar Ramadan ke tidak? Pergi atau pergi. tidak? Pergi. Okay. Apa yang you all biasa beli? Ataupun apa yang gerai paling banyak menjual? Mutabak. Mutabak. Air jagung. Saingan ke? Air jagung. Lagi apa? Kuih. Mutabak. Apa uh, makanan kegemaran you all waktu Ramadan? Ya kalau pergi tak sah lah kalau tak tak beli. Apa dia? Just give, give me something. Apa dia? Pompelita. Oh tepung pelita. Okay alright. Okay alright. Katakanlah tepung pelita. Gerai Cik Limah jual tepung pelita. Gerai Cik Abu jual, jual tepung pelita. Gerai Cik Atan guna tepung pelita. Ha, mulalah. Mari 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 tepung pelita saya dua ringgit. Dua ringgit untuk lima ketul. Dua ringgit dua ringgit dua ringgit. Seorang lagi kata saya punya seringgit sembilan puluh sen, seringgit sembilan puluh sen. Bujur saya saya punya lagi murah. Ya, seringgit tujuh puluh lima, seringgit tujuh puluh lima. Apa yang dia orang buat tu? Apa yang dia orang buat? Competing. Competing kan? Dia competing among each other. Betul tidak? Betul. Yes. Okay, tender figure eh. Tender figure. Tender saya 1.5 juta. Tak, tak. Tender saya 1.6 juta. Tak, saya lagi rendah. Tender saya 1 juta saja. Apa maksud dia tu? Apa maksud dia? Tender tersebut very? Competitive. Competitive. Faham kan maksud kinas? Maksud dia apabila harga itu dekat-dekat rapat-rapat Seringgit Seringgit sepuluh sen, seringgit dua puluh sen, seringgit tiga puluh sen Woi ini competition yang sangat keen Sangat uh, fierce, sangat 
apa yang dalam bahasa Melayu eh? Apa orang panggil kalau competition ni sangat fierce, apa nama dia eh? Wahai Seng- bahasa Melayu. Okay. Sengit. Oh, sengit. Okay, sengit. Okay, sama juga. Kalau tender kan, dia hantar kata ke Melayu klien kan. Woi, dia punya different between one tender figure dengan another tender figure tu very close to one another, right? So, uh, pertandingan untuk mendapatkan projek tu sangat singit. Tapi salah dunia siapa yang menang? Okay, tepung pelita siapa yang you beli? Tepung pelita yang paling murah lah dah. Okay, alright. Sama juga kalau you nak ambil projek. Projek mana yang pergi? The lowest standard bid lah. Okay. Uh. So, Puan Has selalu gunakan analogi yang sangat senang. Sebab tu Puan Has kata, kalau you tak masuk kelas I... You tak faham basic, you tak tahu datang main, sekejap datang, sekejap tak datang. You don't understand. If you come to my class, if you follow my lecture, you will understand secara secara basic ya. Yeah. So dalam buat pasal malam, kita ada competitive prizes jual peta completer. In any project, ya, yeah, kalau kita nak tahu kompetitif ke tidak, a tender dengan another tender, then The, in, the tender is very close to one another. Sama juga tender price index. Kalau tender price index ni, ya, yeah, the price level tu, ya, yeah, is very keen. Katakanlah tahun tu berlakunya ekonomi yang sangat baik, you akan dapati bahawa steady dia peningkatan harga tersebut. Tetapi jika berlaku price very sharp increase or very sharp uh, decrease, ya, yeah, Menjunam dah jatuh something wrong somewhere. Ya, yeah? macam during the COVID ya. Yeah? Menjunam jatuh TPI kita dan sebagainya. Ya, yeah? ekonomi tak apa-apa stable. Kalau kompetitif e- tender, ekonomi is very healthy. Competition is very healthy. Orang menjual tadi harga berbeza very healthy. So, individual tender prices that is very close to one another is described a very healthy, healthy price increase. Mana ekonomi kita masih lagi dalam keadaan yang bagus. Okay. Alright. So. Okay. Uh, ini ada satu uh, yang dikatakan bahawa jika sekiranya indeks itu terlampau rendah low key index daripada biasa maka maka you tak boleh guna indeks tersebut otherwise it result to a very Unaccurate cost plan and hence cost limit. Alright, so as I bagi example during COVID atau during uh, rusuhan tak boleh guna. Ya, yeah? negeri-negeri yang mempunyai rusuhan macam dekat negara uh, negara yang luar negara lah. Okay, so ini dah saya dah cakap macam mana kita nak construct tender price index menggunakan price PQ or successful tenders. Kenapa successful? Sebab tanda tu yang kita gunakan measure rates yang price dia kita dah check evaluates ya yeah, very close to our QS tender table documents. Alright. What time is it now eh? Okay 12.30. Alright. Alright. Uh, when to construct index immediately after the contract is signed JKR within one month after the contract is signed. JKR and ISM, uh, 80 price indices are considered reliable sample. Saya kata 50 ke 100 lah ya. 50 ke 100 tetapi ada yang saya tahu projek-projek yang 3 atau 5 saja. Contohnya projek red macam diamond building, green building. Eh. Kita tak banyak lagi projek green. Boleh bilang dengan jari ya. Eh. So kita prepare every three months or every half a year because of fluctuations very rapid. Okay, I don't want to go into any detail because I have mentioned this very briefly but what it says ialah normally we pick up sample randomly around Malaysia include both private sector, public sector projects, yeah. And then we must remember, yeah, kalau guna conventional project, guna conventional project. Kalau guna design and build, guna sampel daripada design and build. Jangan campur aduk because it will reflect different different uh, contract conditions all together. Okay. Alright. I don't want to go in it into. Ah, inilah formula yang saya sebut ni. Yeah. To prepare the tender price index. Yeah. 
Okay, square root of m dalam bracket and a. A is the number of sample, m is the product value of all indices of this sample. So, you use this formula. You know, how, what, wherever details, you can read the construction of standard price indices in IVO syllabus, in um, BCISM dan sebagainya. Measured weight. Tadi saya kata ambil daripada measured work. Measured work. Nanti you all tanya kat saya, Madam, apa tu measured work? Okay, measured work you all dah belajar dalam BQ. Ya, yeah? dalam BQ, dalam um, dalam dalam measurement you all dah belajar. Ya, yeah? yeah, contract sum less non-measured work. Uh, last week kita measure about prelim, PC sum, provisional sum, profit and attendance and contingency. Jangan masukkan. Ya, yeah? kita hanya ambil measured work. Kerja yang kita kira sahaja. Ya, yeah? tak, tak, bukan kita letak lump sum ke whatever. BQ consists of thousands of measured work. Okay, alright. Priority is given to the most expensive item followed by the less expensive item. Kenapa? Kita nak letak weightage ya, harga yang paling mahal daripada harga yang paling rendah. Okay, alright. Weightage, weightage yang paling rendah. Bukan harga ya, weightage yang paling rendah. Advantages of using tender price. Uh, the ideas that I mentioned this already. Kita measure changes over time. Kita boleh tengok perbezaan daripada tahun biasa, kita buat comparison between projects, kita boleh tengok relationship between different project, different functions, different localities, different market conditions, yeah. The problem is because sometimes the sample does not really provide a suitable suitable uh, examples or samples that you use is open to uh, errors, open to uh, some ambiguities, uh, the more sample you use is better, but at the same time, you know, if you have a very few uh, samples and you can only access few projects because you dalam storeroom you tak ada contohnya kurang project tersebut, then it's not it's not that accurate. Okay, uh, all right. I think I go do that. Okay, I just go. Okay, base. Okay, kita dah sebut tadi. This year, current year and future dates. Okay, future dates. Very interesting. That's tutorial for you for next year. Next year pula dah. Tutorial for you for next week. I will give you one tutorial. I, I don't call it tutorial. Every single week I give you um present, a gift. So, last week, the gift is to estimate your mom's house. Uh, the term I use for project management also. I'm going to give you a gift. The gift for this year ialah I not you. Bagi I future index. Okay. Nanti saya ajar. Macam mana nak buat dan apa yang awak kena buat. Okay. Saya tak nak buat yang ni. Saya tak nak buat yang ni. Saya dah sebut pun sebahagian daripada yang ni. Saya tak nak buat yang ni. Saya tak nak buat yang ni. Okay. Yeah. Tetapi saya nak bagi gift for next, next week. Gift for next week. Alright. Ini adalah gift for next week. Okay. Ha, dengar baik-baik. Alright. So, saya nak you masuk dalam let me just go to what I already given to you uh, dalam you punya oh, do, 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 do. oh, you punya ni. Sorry lah tengok saya punya nota-nota kat sini pula tu. Okay. Alright. Akadise. Okay. Akadise. Saya ambil Akadise. Saya senang. Okay. Open. Oh, dah ada pun ni. Okey. Boleh nampak tak ni? Boleh nampak? Boleh. Boleh. Saya nak, ah, ni, ni gift you all. Semua orang kena buat sendiri-sendiri ya. Sebab tak ada seorang pun yang akan kopi mengopi ya. Tak ada hal yang dalam kelas saya tak ada kopi mengopinya. Apa yang saya nak you all buat adalah saya nak you pergi kepada, ya, nanti kita tengok graf dia. Buat masa ni, saya tak nak lagi tunjuk perbezaan antara graf TPI dengan graf uh, PCI sebab saya tak nak confusekan you all lagi. Alright. Okay. Boleh nampak ke tidak? Okay. Boleh nampak? Boleh. Okay. Alright. Sebenarnya ni tahun berapa ya saya guna Okay, tahun 22. Okay, good. Okay, alright. 
Dia tugas you all. This is what a tender price in that looks like. Saya tak tunjuk lagi tender price you rupa macam ni. Ah, ni lebih kurang rupa dia. At one scale you have tahun, the other scale you have the punya weightage. Okay. Uh, 2011, 2012, 2013, sampai lah 2019. First quarter and second quarter. Okay. So kita tengok ya 2011 dia adalah 411.36 2012 dia adalah 429.32 Okay Alright Dia habis tahun 2019 Sebenarnya 2019 ni tengah naik Kalau you sambung lah Kat mana saya tengok hari tu ya Tender price index 2023 That means yang ini sebab ni Let me see whether I can get a much more here. Yeah. DPI for 2023 Malaysia. Sebab okay, ada ke DPI mungkin tak buat lagi kot. Uh, set set kita tengok dulu. Oh gambar. Gambar botol sikat yang keluar ya. Eh. Sebab is um, I don't know whether Arkadise dah keluarkan yang terbaru Sebab yang saya punya Okay tak takpelah it's, It doesn't matter It doesn't matter So let me just go back to To Let me just go back to Arkadise tadi Where is it? Uh, see Okay, let me just, just go back as Saya ada nampak uh, tender price index tahun 2023. Di mana lepas tahun 2019 tersebut, ekonomi jatuh disebabkan oleh COVID. Market, um, so, dia punya, macam mana nak cakap eh? Line tersebut pun jatuh sedikit dan meningkat balik pada tahun 2023. I'm not really sure but I want you to find out tender price index yang terkini. Okay, uh, Dr. Ros. Dr. Ros, are you there? Dr. Ros, Anis ada? Tak ada ya? Okay, kalau Dr. Ros, okay tak apa. Okay, so apa yang saya nak buat adalah saya nak gunakan graph paper. Boleh tak you gunakan graph paper? Okay, gunakan graph paper. Dan uh, letak dalam graf paper tersebut To scale 2001 hingga 2024 hingga 2025 Saya nak sampai 2025 Baik, apa yang you all kena buat adalah Pada tahun 2019, 2020, 2021 Berlakunya Kejatuhan indeks sedikit disebabkan oleh COVID. So you kena carilah dalam references ya berapa indeks during that time dan uh, you benar menggunakan graph dan apabila you let me just show you an example lah senang ya. Saya print screen lah senang. Uh, set, saya print screen yang macam ni. Kan nanti tak kaki nak buat pula ya. Okay kita pergi kat sini. Kita paste kat sini. Okay macam ni nak buat. Ni tanggungjawab you all next week. Paste. You dengar cakap saya pasal betul. One day you become a very good QS. Okay. Alright. So draw line. So what I want you to do is you nampak ni. Dia 2020. Okay dia jatuh sedikit. You cari kejatuhan dia ni. And then you project kepada 2025 Okay you buat guna graph paper tau Kalau tak buat dengan graph paper yang halus itu Yang warna hijau tu Then you tengok kat sini You bagi saya jawapan Pada 2025 Berapakah dia punya TPI Okay that's your job for Next week Semua orang kena submit Saya nak you buat projection Ikut kenaikan harga Ingat Something happen here which is COVID. So dia jatuh juga macam ni. Dia jatuh juga sikit macam ni. 
Tetapi dia pick up lagi selepas tahun 2022 ke atas Eh 2023 lah 2022 Saya tak tahu COVID habis bila That is for you to investigate So faham ya I hope you understand what you need to do today Alright Second thing ialah Kita sampai ke penghujung lecture already Tadi kawan you ada hantar Class rate you ada hantar Google Doc Wah, tepuk tangan sikit. Boleh tepuk tangan sikit tak? Oh, tepuk-tepuk tangan saya nak dengar. Very good. Very good. Wah, hebat-hebat-hebat. Wah, mai kita tengok. Kita ada 15 minit. Okay. Uh, saya nak tengok. Semua ada kat sini lagi ke? Semua ada kat sini? Ada eh? Okey, Dr. Ros Anis ada? Ada anda nampak tak? Dr. Anis Ros. Tak ada eh? Tak ada eh? Cuba tengok siapa yang ada kat sini. Dr. Anis? Are you there? Oh, dia tak ada dah. Okey, tak apa. Dia tak ada. Okey. Bonda nak bagi uh, pada yang dapat yang accurate Bonda nak belanja buka puasa RM20 Okay bagi nombor account siapa pemenangnya nanti Bonda nak suruh you pergi beli tepung pelita ke Beli matabak ke Okay so bagi nombor account Bonda nak belanja you all RM20 Kalau lah Harga rumah mak you buat ni berdekatan dengan harga semasa Tepat Sebab Bonda nak cari a good QS kan So sat dulu kita tengok kat mana Bonda tunjuk tadi ya Mana gambar yang ni ke Bukan yang ni Mana you all punya Where is it ya class rep guna, guna Google tadi WhatsApp. So kena pergi WhatsApp balik lah ya. So no. Pergi WhatsApp balik. Okay alright. Okay pergi buka balik. I thought I buka banyak kali dah. Actually boleh tengok dah down dulu. Okay alright. Cik. Itu dia. Okay 27 orang kita tengok ya. Kita ada lebih kurang 10 minit lagi. Aida. Aiza rumah teres. Aida where are you? Ya yeah, Bonda. Okay Aida. Uh, awak baca lah. Bonda penat dah. Tengok dia punya. Ah. Rumah you Kita rumah? Ah, teres. Uh -huh. Location at Puncak Alam. Uh -huh. Double story house. GFA dia 68.56. Price. Uh, 1500. Cost. 102.838. Um, Hazira. Macam mana kira gross per area? Macam mana you kira? Uh, lebar darah panjang rumah. Macam mana you kira you guna apa? Saya guna tape yang panjang tu. Tape yang panjang eh? Uh. Belah dalam eh? Uh, belah dalam, dinding dalam. Uh, dua tingkat? Ah uh, Yes. Stand standard specification? Uh, Berapa ada bilik? bilik. Oh, empat ada bilik, tiga toilet. Ha, sekarang dia expect lah. Okay, alright. Okay, Aina Nabila, kat mana rumah? Um, dekat Kelintang Perak. Ha, lagi? Lepas tu, um, one story height. Uh -huh. uh, dia punya GFA, 125, kekurangan uh -huh. 42. Awak kira macam mana? Um, saya kira panjang darat lebar dia. Panjang darah? Lebar. Okay, alright. Okay. Guna tape ke? Haa. Uh -uh. Okay, good. Okay, price dia um, RM1,163. And total cost dia RM100,045. RM863,46K. Oh, Allah QF betul lah awak ni. RM46 pun awak kira lah. Haa. <laughs> 
Dia only QA betul lah 46 sen pun awak berkira suruh kelaya bayar ya. Okay alright. Harga tu dapat dari mana Aina? Um, saya ambil pinang punya te untuk teras. Kenapa pinang? Tolong insta so, kan perak? Uh, sebab um, perak pun ya, tak jumpa. Oh okay ambil pinang ya? Ha ha. Okay, kita tengok location dia dengan sepatutnya location tak boleh guna perak uh, Tak boleh guna pinang mm. Okay tapi tak apa, tak apa Ashraf Eh, Ashraf tak ada? Ada, ada, ada Belum isi ah, dulu ah, Isi, isi, isi sekarang Okay, okay. kita pergi dekat Farish uh, Ah, yeah, Ya, yeah, ya yeah, benda Nah, cepat rumah awak Uh, rumah saya teres dua tingkat dekat Syah Alam Dia punya gross floor area 143.7 uh, Dia punya price uh, 1400 and the total cost is 200,298 Hmm okay Paris uh -huh. Tak dapat 1400 boleh beli flat ya Paris Tak boleh beli oh, Paris Oh Syah Alam lagi tinggi ya <laughs> Tak seribu empat ratus tu boleh beli um, flat biasa-biasa, biasa-biasa je. Oh. Okay alright tapi tak apa. Itu harga tahun lapan puluhan tu. Lapan ratus ribu. Harga sekarang kat Syak Alam, Teres. Syak Alam section berapa? Section U10. Oh lagi lah tak boleh. Okay alright. Oh, tak tapi tak apa good try. Nanti kita update sikit harga tu bagi naik. Okay. Alright. Yerdina. Ya yeah, Bonda. Rumah kat mana? Dekat Kota Kinabalu Yang lain masukkan ya Ah Ini bergerak ni Kota Kinabalu Okay Edina Detach House Kota Kinabalu 1260 Double ya Besar rumah you eh Edina Ah. Huh? Very big ya huh? You have a big house Berapa bilik? Uh, 6 bilik Oi Mak Datuk Berapa, <laughs> berapa bathroom? Ah uh, Tiga je Tiga ya, yeah. very big. Uh, dining, um, hall dia besar eh? Uh, living room besar lah. Okay, harga 2250. Mana dapat harga tu? Dari yang KK punya construction cost tu. Okay, but you KK kan? Uh. Okay, alright. That's looking good. 585, uh, above half a million. Okay, kita tengok. Saya tengok je lah ya. Fazlina, Rawang, Terrace House, 226, Terrace House dekat Rawang, 144, 226. Interesting, 226 dekat Rawang. Tak dapat nak beli Terrace House tu. Murah tu. Underestimate sikit tu. Okay. Alright. Rafa, Nawi, Kucing. Oh, Rafa, Nawi, low cost housing. In Kucing pun tak dapat 160 even though it is a low cost housing. Now it is 175, uh, 915. 915 tak dapat doh. 915 tak dapat. Rumah kat Kucing tak dapat. Okay. Alright. Darwish. Melaka. Eh tengah isi. Okay, Natasha, Sungai Besi. Nanti nak. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. Natasha. Ya. Yeah. <laughs> Ratus ribu tu masa saya umur 30 tahun. Rumah flat. Harga seratus ribu low cost flat. Saya beli sebiji dekat section 24 low cost flat. Tujuh puluh ribu zaman tu sekarang. Lepas tu naik RM100,000. Sekarang tak dapat dah. Tak dapat dah. Okey itu rumah prima pun tak dapat. Dini, Amani, Banglo, Kota Baru tengah isi. Ariana, Teres. Tak ada lagi tengah isi. Okey. Kajang 130. 204. Uh, a bit low. Uh, Alustak 1148. 146 Okay Alright Terrace House Sri Iskandar <laughs> Sedihnya Inilah orang tak pernah pegang duit ya Dia ingat 160 lebih tu banyak sangat dah duit Tak dapat nak beli apa lah ni ya Nak naik haji uh, Pakej mahal pun tak dapat Okay 
Teres Kuantan, 130 teres segamat. Ay, siapa pun dia nak belajar makan ni kalau macam ni ni. Segamat 158 tak dapat, tak dapat. 1575 tak dapat kat segamat. Okay. Low cost black in class, saya tunggu Sungai Petani. 175 teres tak dapat. 1221 Uh, besar tu 141 meter square tu besar lah. Harga pun murah tu Harga 221 tu Sekarang ni harga kondominium Ataupun uh, apa tu Apartment dekat setiap alam 221 tak dapat Nak beli rumah. Kalau ada rumah harga macam tu Lama dah saya dengan Ros Anis Beli kot ya. Uh, uh, Dr. Ros beli dengan saya kot rumah Yang harga macam tu okay. Terrace house Syah Alam Hmm It's very interesting. Yang strike my mind Terengganu tu satu, ha, ni bungalow house ni. Siapa tu? Akila rumah awak. Berapa bilik? Besar tu gross block area. Akila berapa bilik? Ha? Sekejap. Uh, empat. Empat Tuk. bilik. Bilik uh. air ada berapa? Bilik air ada tiga. Tiga. Ada pik uh, tempat makan besar eh? Haa. Uh -uh. Ada ruang tamu dua. Tempat makan dua. Oh, no wonder lah. Tempat makan dua. Uh -uh. Ruang tamu dua. Haa. Uh -uh. Okey, Sat. Nanti saya pergi beraya. Rumah kat mana? Dekat Batu Rakit. Ah oh, dekat tu. Kat rumah raya tu balik. Dapat airport saya pergi lah. Singgah rumah Akilah raya eh. Boleh Sebab aja. Rumah besar tu. Okey, 410. Okey lah. Reasonable but still. Kalau kat Batu Rakit, harga pun mahal juga. Tapi dia teres ya, teres. Teres boleh dah lah. Boleh lah. Boleh lah. Boleh lah acceptable sikit. Saya tunggu yang lain. Saya tak boleh, tak fail untuk yang lain yang belum isi. Uh, makin lama makin masuk kat dalam tu. Uh, apa ada pandangan saya, okay, komen saya adalah disebabkan you all tak pernah merasa pegang duit tau. You all anggapkan seratus ribu tu besar. Sebenarnya seratus ribu sekarang ni tak boleh beli um, Well um, macam mana nak cakap eh um, You all biasa tunggu kan bus Bus uh, bus, bus stop kan Itu pun sekarang tujuh puluh ribu ya Kadang-kadang enam puluh ribu Kadang-kadang dua puluh lima ribu Kalau ada bus stop yang ada solar panel Ya yeah. tak boleh nak beli apa-apa dah sekarang ni Dengan seratus ribu ya Kecuali uh, Rumah kos rendah yang uh, government uh, government sponsored. Oh, saya Hilwina, your your last kali. Hilwina Azhara, Az Azhara. Yes, uh, Bunda. What what do I call you? Uh, Zahra. Zahra ya. Ah. Uh -uh. uh, Klan Tan di test uh -uh. house satu split level. Apa maksudnya split level? Split level ni dia macam dia bukan double house tapi dia macam ada satu part tu dekat bahagian bawah and satu lagi tu di atas. Dia uh, ting, tapi kat bawah tu dia tak ada dia tak ada pun uh, floor level. Okay alright. Besar rumah you lah. <laughs> Ke tujuh satu. Berapa bilik ni? Tujuh bilik. You pernah tak beritahu kat mak you lepas you measure ni? You cakap mak-mak rumah kita RM945,000 mak. Haa uh, cakap lepas tu dia uh, dia dah ayah saya, dah tahu dah. ayah saya pun dah tahu dah uh, dia punya luas berapa. Haa. Uh, Jadi mak you cakap apa? Anak dia good KS ke tak good KS? <laughs> tahu dia macam tak ada reaction pun. Haa uh, tak ada reaction? Dia cakap macam oh macam tu. Oh macam tu je. Eh uh -huh. kalau saya jadi mak saya cakap dia awak ni measure terlampau tinggi. You know that kind of thing kan. Wah ataupun bapak you kata oh besok kita boleh gadai lah rumah ni satu million oh kita cari dua biji rumah lah dekat KL you know. That kind of thing kan. So okay alright ladies and gentlemen I hope it has been a very good exercise. Saya akan komen next week sebab saya nak tunggu semua masuk terlebih dahulu. Okay, saya serius. Saya nak belanja you all makan, berbuka puasa RM20 je lah bajet saya kan. Kita main-main je. Okay, so saya akan minta kepada pemenang dia apa, dia punya bank in, saya akan bank in dia punya, dia punya apa, dia punya money. 
Okay saya pun nak kena pergi uh, meeting kena, Saya kena stop sharing terlebih dahulu Stop sharing Okay I go back to all of you to open your camera please uh, Dekat pukul satu dah ni Okay let's take pictures together Where is my my? Okay let's take pictures together I open mine and you open yours Please open your camera uh, Darwish jangan duduk tempat yang ada cahaya sangat Pina muka. Okay. Puas. Nampak eh. Nampak eh. 